This is episode 20 of In Touch with Terry, a podcast for medical spa professionals looking to develop systems and processes to attract more clients, convert more patients into paying procedures, and generate more revenue. People should always be investing, assuming that they have some discretionary or they have some cash flow. And, you know, it's like if you're earning some money, you need to be able to take a percentage of that and take some of the chips off the table and start putting money away. The piece that an advisor helps you with is figuring out how much should that be and what the time horizon is, when are you going to need the money, what's it earmarked for, is it for retirement, is it for buying a house, is it for college education for the future for your kids. It's helpful to understand what that looks like for your clients and then that's how we would go about helping them figure out how do they get started. Hello tribe, it's Terry Ross. And I always want to start off the podcast just by showing my appreciation and thanking you guys all for listening, uh, chiming in, writing your comments and giving your feedback. I love doing this. And more importantly, I love bringing you the best of the best. So I wanted to shift gears a little bit and talk about money. Um, obviously, I have gotten so many um questions with regards to my clients. We've been shut down for four to five months, losing so much revenue, elective surgeries, you know, not being able to happen. So this episode is really going to be talking about investing and considering the state of affairs we're in, I thought that this could not be a more perfect time. So I am really honored to have with me today, Brandon Matloff, who is the founder of Stella Oak Financial, which is a boutique wealth management firm in downtown Los Angeles with offices in Santa Monica and my hometown, Manhattan Beach, his too, actually. Uh, Stella Oak also focuses on tax and wealth strategies. Um, And what I love about him is he's just always striving to be the best. Brandon is also the CFO of a nonprofit called the Institute of Neuro Innovation, which is a research foundation focused on education surrounding Alzheimer's and dementia. So giving back. Um, So Brandon, thank you so much for being with me today. I would love if you could just, again, share a little bit more about you, how long you've been you know, doing this, and then really talk high level about the market right now. Well, thank you, Terry, for having me. I appreciate you uh, having us on the show. Um, my background is in corporate finance. I studied finance in school, and my dad's been in financial planning and retirement planning for 50 some odd years. He's in his mid seventies and still working away. And so I kind of grew up with the attitude that I'm going to be in this thing for the long haul. Um, as far as where I uh, view the markets are today, I think like most people, we all kind of view the markets as, as very overvalued. When we look at the markets today, we try to separate the different areas of the stock market. So we look at the real estate market, we look at the commodities, or hard asset markets, we look at the international markets, and we look at the U.S. markets. Most people, when they hear that question, like, how do we view the markets, they're thinking about the U.S. stock market, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ. And so we're looking at that area of the market as as very highly overvalued. Um, But the rest of the market, there's different opportunities that we look at as we manage someone's portfolio to look for areas of improvement and where the prices actually start to make sense or at least starting to get more attractive. I know people are always questioning about when they should be investing. What are your thoughts in terms of, you know, somebody early on in their career or even right now making a shift in where their money's going? That's a really good question as far as um, when people should start. I think that at any capacity, it's always a good time to invest in the market. The question is just how much and in what way are you going to invest? We have a couple college interns um, that work for us. And you know, right before the coronavirus hit and the markets were at all time highs, you know, they they also asked, should we start investing in the market? And if you think about the time horizon, like if you're 18 or 19 years old and you have 40 years till you retire, um, yeah, I mean, putting money away at an early age is not going to be a bad thing long term. It really depends on the time horizon as far as like how, how aggressive and how you might manage your assets. But most people over time, uh, as they're earning income, they need to take some of that money and save it if they want to get to a place in life where they don't want to have to work anymore, right? And they choose to work, but they don't have to. And so 
really all times are always good to invest. It's just at all times, there's different strategies and how you want to go about investing money in the market. So I would say like, when should someone start? People should always be investing, assuming that they have some discretionary or they have some cash flow. And, you know, it's like, if you're earning some money, you need to be able to take a percentage of that and take some of the chips off the table and start putting money away. The piece that an advisor helps you with is figuring out how much should that be and what the time horizon is. When are you going to need the money? What's it earmarked for? Is it for retirement? Is it for buying a house? Is it for college education for the future for your kids? It's helpful to understand what that looks like for your clients. And then that's how we would go about helping them figure out how do they get started. Just to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, if you're an early investor or earlier in your career, is there a certain amount of money that someone would need to get started? That's a great question. I think there's online platforms that you can start with as little as a couple hundred dollars. And then there's different advisors that depending on how much money a client has, they'll be willing to uh, work with, with their clients. And I think that depending on what the client's goal is, it could make sense to work with somebody or just to use one of the online platforms. You know, the best thing to do is if you're starting out and really trying to figure out what route to go, I think you just go on Google and you type in online investment platforms. And then you go to somebody like Terry, who you know, or you listen to, or you you trust and you ask them, you know, what are some wealth advisors or financial planning uh, establishments that you can reach out to? And that's kind of how to get started. It's by word of mouth, asking someone you trust to get you connected and then doing some of your own online research. I think the best way is really to do a combination of all the th- of all three ways because you kind of learn a little bit. And even if you make some mistakes investing early on, that's okay. Those are good lessons to learn so that you don't make the same mistake again. And sometimes people try to do it on their own and they find that they just don't have the time or the interest, but it's good that they tried so that they know what what they're missing. They know that they're missing out on advice. Sometimes people will come to um, investment managers too soon and they have some money and they have some level of expectations, but unless they've been somewhere before where they've tried, it's really hard to, to match what they're looking for. Clearly, if somebody inherits a lot of money relative to their own financial situation, they probably need some help. But I would also argue that most people are smart enough to read a few things online and start at some capacity. And then, you know, an advisor can be there to help them, you know, guide them along the way. Good stuff. Um, How do you determine, and I'm sure, again, this is all, these are all variable questions, but how would a wealth manager determine how and where to invest someone's money? The first thing we do is we start off by understanding the time horizon, like when is this client going to need the money and what their risk tolerance looks like, like try to understand like how comfortable they are with volatility and having their assets go up and down in value. So trying to understand that. And then based on those understandings, we create a portfolio that matches with that client's needs, a combination between call it stocks, bonds, mutual funds, index funds, ETFs, and different alternative investments potentially. As far as how do we specifically identify what specific products or specific index funds that we choose in a client's portfolio, that's really based on the manager's and the analyst's recommendations. And then what we do is we look through our team's local research. We look through our online resources. We look through different wholesalers that provide examples to us of what they're looking at. And we kind of use a blend between all three of those things in order to figure out which assets a client should necessarily be in. So it's not so much of, I pick up the newspaper, I read something that sounds like a good idea, I do some of my own research, and then we say we're going to invest in this position. It's more of a combination of uh, your local team's research coupled with your the national infrastructure of the financial institution you're affiliated with, the client's risk tolerance and time horizon, where they've been and trying to understand them. And then you look at all of those things together. And if you can really understand your client's background and as far as how they feel their comfort level, then that's how we 
create a, a strategy that works for them. You guys, this is such great information. I know this is, gosh, way over my head, you know, um, and I've had to learn along the way. And certainly my business has been affected, as I'm sure so many others have during this time, especially. So with the markets, Brandon, being so, you know, just in, in great state of fluctuation and the uncertainty, what have you been hearing from your clients um, in terms of their money? And how are you assuring them what's the right thing to do? So I can really empathize right now with a lot of clients financial situations because there's a ton of uncertainty in the market. They're hearing news like their income has been reduced by 20 or 25%. Some of them have lost their clients. Some clients have lost their jobs. You know, there's all types of different situations that we're hearing about. And that coupled with all of the uh, racial injustice going on today, it has a lot of people really at on edge as far as their money and every really every aspect of their life, what they're going to do with their kids in school, or is everyone going to be using Zoom in the future? Here we are using a Zoom podcast where in the past we may have done this in person. So, you know, so much is changing and so quickly. So for us, the way we look at how we're going to help our clients is really try to understand what's going on in their world and have the investment selection and have the investment advice be secondary. We really want to have an understanding of where our clients are headed, what their short-term needs are for their money, what their long-term needs are for their money, and really try to make the portfolio crafted to that situation. You have to empathize with what's happening in today's world. And unless you really can understand what a client's liquidity needs may be, you you can't do your 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 job fully well. So you you need to understand where your clients are at, and that's how we craft something for them. Are you finding Brandon that people are your clients are are pulling out money, or or taking an opportunity to say it's a time to reinvest, or invest in things that they weren't before? So right now, I haven't had anybody pull out. I'm not saying that that's not going to happen in the future. I did get a couple calls in early March when the pandemic first happened with clients that had lost some money in the markets. And they asked, you know, should we be pulling our money out? I had a couple clients that did get really, really nervous and said they wanted to pull them out. And then what we typically did is really try to understand their situation. Like, why? Are they retiring next year? Are they retiring in six months? Or is it just they're scared of the, the markets? And so, what we try to do is pull everything back, try to look at everything in perspective and say, look, if you're 35 years old and you're earning some income and the markets go down 50%, which they didn't go down in March, I think it was somewhere between 30 and 35% in the US. But even if they went down 50%, right, are they going to retire in a year or two where they need all that money to live off of? And if they are, then I would argue they probably shouldn't have been in that position in the in the interim. If they're 65 years old, that's a different situation altogether. And you probably don't have as an aggressive allocation on those clients' portfolios. But if you're a young person and you have a, a long time till till you ultimately retire, getting scared of being in, in and out of the market is a good thing, right? That creates opportunity for advisors like me to try to invest money and earn the fee that we charge our clients and to earn the fee that says, Hey, look, you're scared right now. This is not a time to sell. This is actually a better time to buy because you're buying in at a lower price. We've all heard that old adage, you know, buy low, sell high. So when the markets go down, guys like me and people in different industries look at it as a opportune time to go invest in the markets and invest and buy other businesses and do other things that we can do to capitalize on the low prices. Just like if something is on sale, it's a better opportunity to buy it, right? So I think during the craziness of the world going on, like when you look at all the things and all the fear, there's opportunities there. And that's how we communicate with our clients and say, look, this is normal. That's good that there's a lot of fear in the industry. That's a good time for us to rebalance and to capitalize. It's not the time to sell. But a big part of that is having the conversation with our clients before that happens. So like at the end of 2019, we were doing our portfolio reviews and our clients saw that their gains in their account were significant. Well, that is great 
but you need to talk about what's going to happen in the next year or the next two years. And the reality is we can't predict the future. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen with the markets, if they're going to go up or they're going to go down. But if there's a correction, that's going to be a better opportunity to buy and put more cash to work. And if the markets continue to go up, then you know we can all enjoy the ride as the markets continue to, to increase. So right now, we've gone through this period where the markets have rebounded or the U.S. markets at least have rebounded. And so a lot of people are saying, okay, those are at a high right now. Should we sell again? And I'm, and again, it goes back to that original point that I made earlier that even with the markets coming back, are you retiring next year or in the next two or three years? And if you're not, then why would you sell? You're just going to figure out another time to buy and you might miss out on a continued bull ride. So you have to just let it sit and let it ride. It's going to go up and down and realize that until you're 60 or 65, you're probably not selling. There is tactical things that we do in clients' portfolios to take advantage of international positions and you know fixed income that might be good prices, but you wouldn't necessarily sell to try to time the market at the top. Only a few people have done that well, and very few of them have timed it well on both sides, meaning selling now and then buying again in a couple months when it's lower. If people were actually reasonable, they should be able to do that on their own. But most people can't because at the end of the day, we're all emotional. Even I personally have a financial advisor that helps me look at my own money. And the reason is, is because it's hard to take a step back and remove yourself from the situation, right? So even having advice at the highest level, you know, Warren Buffett has advisors Mm -hmm. that he looks at, you know, Ray Dalia has advisors that, that he looks at. So, you know, even at the highest level, we're still human at the end of the day, and we're emotional when it comes to money. And when we see the roller coaster of it going up and down, there's still something that tells us, okay, the market's going down, we need to sell. But at the end of the day, that's why we have advisors that you know help us keep calm and think through what the long-term financial plan is going to look like and what their long-term goals are. And ultimately, the goal was to get to a point where they don't have to work well, then they shouldn't be trying to sell money at the top of the market or try to buy extra at the bottom. They should just look at everything from a planning perspective and they'll be in a great place long-term. I know as we're bringing it back to the aesthetic market, I want to make a couple of points. You know, number one, obviously elective surgeries were shut down for months. They're just starting to open up slowly. And then I heard Texas um, kind of shut back down and Florida is getting, getting hit hard. But these practices have lost right? I mean, you can't not not pay your rent, right? They've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. The team's been furloughed. They have lease payments on all this expensive equipment. You know, they're trying to save anybody they can. And now even if the ones that are open and coming back, you know, they can only stagger a patient every hour. Like how the hell do you make up the lost revenue? So I like what you said about not pulling money out, but yet it's, it's, it's sort of based on everybody's, I guess, particular situation. Um, any pearls of wisdom or comments in terms of what my clients are sort of facing and this industry is facing in terms of how do they sort of recover? I'd be in a different line of work if I really knew the answer to that. But what I will say is I'll answer that from a portfolio perspective. I think that if we had a doctor that was looking at their practice and we knew that there's going to be instability of cash or cash flow, and that there's a potential use of their investment dollars, I would keep a percentage of their portfolio in something that I would call relatively liquid for use of their business. And so I would invest a percentage of their portfolio in something that I don't think is going to have very much, if any, volatility in the markets. So let's take an example where somebody has a, um, a burn rate of their practice of I don't know, 50,000 a month. And they know that they're going to receive for sure with their steady patients, 25,000 a month. So they're losing 50% a month on revenue. And if they can't figure out a place to cut costs somewhere else, you know, there's a very good likelihood that they're going to burn cash. So I would ask the question, walk me through your practice on an optimistic view and a pessimistic view. In an optimistic world, do you think, In a year from now, you can redo your lease, redo your payroll. Can you cut costs? 
like in a year from now, could you figure things out? Because obviously indefinitely, it's not going to make sense to lose 25,000 in revenue. You're going to have to make some changes. And they might say, yeah, in a year from now, I can do that. Okay, great. How quickly could that happen where we figured something out? And they said, I don't know, maybe like three months. Okay, so now I have something to work with as an advisor. I have somewhere from three months to 12 months to know that they're going to likely use a part of their portfolio to keep their business going. So if that's 25000 a month for nine months, I know that they're going to need $225,000 potentially in their portfolio. So I'm going to keep $225,000 of their portfolio in something that's going to have little to no volatility. Or I could look at some of their other assets on their balance sheet, whether it be cash or help them look at maybe they have significant uh, equity in their home. Maybe there's some other solutions we can look at from a liquidity standpoint if they need it for their business. But that goes back to figuring out their time horizon and their risk tolerance and to understand what their short-term, mid-term, and long-term liquidity needs are. And so if I do a thorough job fact-finding with that client situation, I can really come up with a number as we manage their portfolio that sh- that's earmarked for their business. And then think about how much easier it is to conduct your financial world as an individual, knowing that you have a plan in place for some lost revenue. Oh my God, Tribe, I, I really love what you just said, Brandon. Thank you. And I'm, I'm probably going to maybe either do an Instagram live or I'm going to do a Facebook poll because what Brandon said is, um, he said two things, you know, looking at your business from an optimistic view and from a pessimistic view. And I think that totally aligns with one of the services we offer, which is the practice assessment. So if you're in business, you have to start there, right? And the intention of that practice assessment almost directly aligns with this optimistic, pessimistic view, because, you know, let's call it what it is. If you're a physician, if you're a medical provider, you are great at what you do in diagnosing patients, but you're not necessarily the best business person. And when we're able to, you know, to, to scrub down your business, we're able to see what are your payroll costs? Are they over the benchmarks, right? Are you, are your prices too low or are they too high? Are you compensating your team legally or, you know, again, not within compliance. There's so many things that we can cut and change. Um, so I would highly encourage you to kind of reach out to me if you're interested in learning more about that. Obviously, reach out to Brandon at StellaOak.com. Um, and I want to le- le- ask you one last question. Brandon, as it relates to your your company and your firm, I mean, have you guys been affected? And and what would you, you know, what would you, you know, tell anybody listening to this of, of what they should be doing now or, or what they could be doing differently? So we've definitely been affected um, more for the influx of calls, trying to understand how the market is being recovering, how it's recovering right now when you just keep saying these negative news. So we're impacted in the amount of activity and just workflow calls with what's going on right now in the world, you know, everything really related to the pandemic. Um, As far as like a financial we're we're not really affected at this point because we're not day traders. I'm not calling my clients and saying, "Hey, this is the stock you need to pick today." So we're not affected from like a cash flow or business projection for the future. We've actually been doing pretty well during this time, but that's only because we take a planning approach to it and our clients understand that on the front end when they become clients. And we can create a tremendous amount of value for them, surrounding them with our team and then other professional services that they need help with, no different than what you do with your own clients. So we have been affected, and I can empathize with what's going on out there, but our effectiveness has just been between activity and workflow of what we've been what we've been focused on and where the conversations have gone. It's become way less about here's what we should do with your money and way more about tell me about what's going on with your spouse. Tell me what's mm-hmm. been going on with your kids. Mm-hmm. How about your parents? Is everybody safe? It's a, it's a lot more of that type of relationship that we're having right now with our clients. And I think the um, long-term loyalty of that will become great because, you know, clients know that they can call us for different things. It doesn't always have to be about their money. So we're for sure affected just in different ways than, than, most people might think. And then um, as far as, you know, how they can 
connect with us or how they can learn more, I think, you know, by reaching out to you and just figuring out, you know, could we be a potential fit? Can I help answer some questions? Of course, anybody can always reach out. Thank you, Brandon. I mean, I kind of want to just recap some really important things. I mean, I think what I took away from this and for all everybody listening in my tribe and anybody considering investing or making a change is that certainly it's it's all dependent on your respective, you know, personal, you know, situation with your family. Um, in terms of, you know, you not being ready or, or somebody not being ready to retire right away. Um, looking at your business in this view that you message, you know, this optimistic and pessimistic view. And I just think you guys, it's really a time to listen. It's, it's, we've always needed to manage our money and we've always needed to manage our families and our businesses with the highest level of integrity and in the best way. And sometimes that doesn't always happen. And the cause of this pandemic is having us relook at things um, in a different way. So I really wanted to have Brandon on to share um, some of the important things that we all should be considering. You know, I say faith over fear, not really pulling out your money, making bad decisions when we can keep it in there and just it's sort of maybe making the right changes. So, Brandon, thank you so much. This was extremely educational for me, and I hope it was for all of you guys listening. Um, If you're interested to learn more, I would love for you to reach out to me personally, Terry at TerryRoss.com. I am happy to put you in touch with Brandon, um, again, founder of Stella Oak Financial, which is in Los Angeles. Um, Any last words, Brandon, before we wrap it? Enjoy the uh, the remainder of the year. There's a lot of news to come. Try to stay calm as you uh, see the news and try not to make initial financial decisions based on tweets and based on uh, posts that are coming in daily. Thank you, honey, so much. It was so great to have you. All right, guys, Tribe, I'm off. I will see you on the next round. Ciao. Thanks for listening to In Touch with Terry. You can find links to learn more about today's guest in the episode notes from whichever platform you're enjoying this podcast. To learn more about Terry Ross's new programs titled Launch, Grow, Scale, or One-on-One with Terry, click the link to terryrossconsulting.com in the episode notes and speak with one of her sales executives to see how these proven programs can help your aesthetic practice thrive.